All right, hello everyone. Welcome back. My name is Corey Dowds of Eye of the Beta. So I want to talk more about the Eclipse Predictions. So this is Eclipse Predictions Part 4. I'm calling this one a total breakdown of the law. <clears throat> because that is basically what we are witnessing right now with the lunar nodes and these eclipses obstructing the signs of Gemini and Sagittarius. These are really the signs of the law and the rules. Gemini symbolizes the rules that you know we play the game by. It represents the rule book. Um, learning your ABCs, learning the proper rules of grammar, this and that. Uh, Sagittarius has more to do with the moral laws, but in the higher laws and the divine laws, and also the laws like car karma, cause and effect and so forth. And it also has to do with cultural laws that we all agree upon. So in China, there everyone has a different culture there, so they'll agree upon different rules than in America and so forth. That's ruled by Sagittarius. All these afflictions, Sagittarius is not doing well right now. And as a result, we're having a total breakdown of the law, basically. And there's a lot of talk of revolution and this and that, and you can't really blame people <clears throat> for talking about that because it just seems like our culture, our ninth house, our Sagittarius is kind of failing us at this time. And so I talked a lot about that previously, that same kind of idea. And I also, so I talked about the, you know, the changing of the guard and all this. And so now there's sort of is this other element of it that's still emphasizing our, a lot of changes going on in our culture and the higher levels of our culture. But what I now want to talk about is, okay, so I mentioned in a previous video about the riots, I mentioned how I was very, very worried about New York City and the Northeast because Jim and I rules the Northeast and New York City. Like I had already made videos about how Jim and I relate to New York City. <coughs> and it's never been written in like a an actual Shastra, of course, um, but that was my own insight based on research. And sure enough, it seems to be holding up true because I'll go ahead and play this clip where I said how I was very concerned about New York City in the Northeast and expected a very, some, you know, ugly news stories to happen. Minneapolis is the twin city. Gemini is the sign of the twins. Gemini also rules cities in general, so all these cities have been getting lit up, but especially Minneapolis, the twin city. Gemini also um, can rule the northeast direction, so I was concerned about New York City going on. I know there was a lot that's gone on in New York City, and I haven't even had time to read all the reports, but we are probably going to see more scary events going on in New York City as well, to be honest with you. All right, so you saw the clip where I was saying I was very, very concerned about New York City during this eclipse. Well, as it turns out, there have been so many shootings, so much violence across the nation. So I'm not acting like it just happened in North in the Northeast. Uh, I don't even have the time um, or the ability and the the research ability and capacity to really go through all the different shootings that have gone on. And there have even been a lot of black people that have been hanged and stuff as a reactions to all these riots and stuff. There were there's a black kid that was hanged in Texas and various other places. Um, but it's on corruptions on both sides. And I want to be 100% clear about that, that there is a ton of corruption within the Black Lives Matter movement. It's funded by a real life Nazi, George Soros. I mean, hello. And then the other people who have basically started the movement are really proud Marxist, like communist people. And if you look into it, there a lot of what they really want is to break down capitalism instead of and set up more of this communist type of world that people don't really like. That's a lot easier, a lot harder to sell on people, so it's more easy to sell like this anti-fascist, like anyone that opposes them is fascist, but they're really opposing capitalism, um, which is not really as marketable, so they don't act like that. So there's a lot of um, a lot of corruption. We know how Antifa is now pretty much a terrorist organization. There is a ton of corruption in that, but there's a ton of corruption within the police department and the cops, and there really are still KKK groups that are within the police. Um, so you can see from astrology that it's not a good time to be too political about your side, your chosen side. Don't get like that. Don't get caught up in just being like, oh, I choose my champion and I'm righteous and they're racist or they're, 
you know, whatever, this or that. It's not a, not a wise time to do that. It's a really an important time to think for yourself and to be really impartial and um, just try to hear out both sides because sat, that's, that's where Rahu's at, Gemini. Gemini's about, Gemini's actually is described as being two-faced, right? That's because it can see both sides. So you need to be like that now. You almost need to be more two-faced or impartial if there ever was a time. Sagittarius is very fanatical. It's just like my way or the highway, fire, like right or wrong. And, and you're seeing a lot of fanaticism that's very unhealthy. And like Ramda said, it's only when your faith begins to flicker that you really become fanatical. So if people are really, really have real faith, then they won't need to defend their beliefs to such fanatical degrees or go around, you know, just preaching nonstop when they're not even when their own lives are just a mess. Like get your own life together before you go and preach. OK, <clears throat> now with that little rant aside. I wanted to, pop, wanted to talk about some of the news stories that have happened. In, per, in particular, one news story that really, really caught my eye was the fact that in New York City, on the exact day or eve of the eclipse, like the eclipse happened at night, on a Saturday night into a Sunday morning, well, in that Saturday, there were 24 people shot throughout only New York City alone. So one shooting for every hour. And there were eight people shot within nine hours in New York City. That's really, really weird because Rahu rules the number eight and K2 rules the number nine. So they actually even gave their signature in that news article. Um, so yeah, 24 people were shot throughout the city. Eight people were shot within nine hours and most of the shootings happened overnight. Um, and the eclipse was happening from Saturday night into Sunday morning. Remember, Mars was really strong in this eclipse, eclipse squaring the nodes and squaring Venus. Mars represents firepower and guns and violence and all that. And remember, K2 was afflicted. So you can see that basically a lot of these shootings probably happened because of people getting way too heated up, way too fanatical, way too hot headed, too much of this unhealthy fire, K2 and Sag. And based off of something not true, like the debilitated Jupiter, not really getting the full picture. <clears throat> so we witnessed a lot of people getting shot in the city ruled by Gemini, New York City, in the Northeast. Remember, Gemini rules the Northeast. So <clears throat> that was that was really upsetting. You can see here in this article, eight people shot in a bloody nine hour stretch in New York City. Um, it started at 7.20 p.m. on Saturday and didn't end until some point in the early morning. There were still two men and a woman were shot at 4.20 a.m. The eclipse was just about to end then. Um, so this is really, really not, <clears throat> not pleasant news. Of course, then now the New York Post also had to do an opinion editorial about why shootings are soaring across the New York across New York City, and it's oh because it's safe to carry again, and blah blah blah. And they didn't bother to ask an astrologer or anyone like that. Of course, just as usual, um, they decided to make it part of their own political spin agenda, like everyone wants to do. Um, so that was unfortunate. Now uh, I know I, I haven't gotten. I'm not getting into talking about all the other terrible shootings, acts of violence, riots, destruction of property. Again, a total breakdown of the law. That kind of encompasses all these things, right? That's kind of the bad news, okay? That, that was sort of the bad, the bad news. But I also wanted to talk about some of the good news, which is that, okay, well, another prediction that I've been talking about a lot, um, I initially predicted it when Saturn first moved into Capricorn, but then even more so in the first uh, eclipse predictions video <clears throat> where I talked more about the coronavirus I talked about how I'm doubling down that there are going to be a lot more UFO disclosures activity we're going to talk about you know maybe more developments with the Space Force or whatever that Trump started or just very there's going to be a lot more UFO disclosure aliens things like that are going to be taken even more seriously and I was just really doubling down that that is a big thing for this year because of all the planets in Capricorn. And remember, Jaimini describes Capricorn as the sign of UFOs and things flying through the air, believe it or not. So now I will play uh, this other quick clip just to prove that. 
okay, from a previous video. Oh, just in case I don't get time to, you know, officially make these predictions in a more formal sense. If you guys haven't watched the previous videos, go watch my video on All About the Capricorn Rashi where I explain how also earlier this year I predicted the major UFO disclosure that happened in September. I predicted that from a video back in April of 2018. Um, and I'm also predicting that there will be much more talk of UFOs, much more talk of deep space discoveries, much more talk of the space programs, talk of secret space programs, talk of the Space Force, all this stuff. There's going to be just so much more UFO uh, disclosure and um, advancements in aviation and spacecraft, just like I was saying earlier for the rest of the year, because Capricorn rules all of that stuff. And we have so much activity going on in Capricorn. And we're hanging out in a world where our phones have advanced so dramatically, but yet we're still flying in a thing that was built in the 70s. We're still flying in airplanes that were designed in the 70s, you know? So it's also just logical that we need to make a lot of changes to aviation, to air travel. And I've already talked. Okay, so you saw how I mentioned a lot of UFO activity. It turns out that, well, the government, the US Navy had already officially confirmed that these videos were real. It is weird, but again, in April, the the government, the Pentagon, officially released the UFO, the famous UFO footage that I've already talked about in previous videos, where now UFOs are officially disclosed. They are a real thing. It is not made up. It is confirmed. They are not saying for sure that these are aliens, but they're just saying that these are unidentified aircrafts flying around our world and the highest level of government doesn't know what they are. Um, so you can see, you can see these articles here. Um, it's really interesting that this is, that, that they release this again. It's almost like, okay, now everyone is at home. This was during the peak of the lockdown, the pandemic. They're like, okay, let's just release this now. While everyone's quiet. Maybe people will notice it more or, uh, yeah, you got to wonder their intention behind it, but there does seem like there's people within the government that really want to get this stuff out there now. Um, now along with that, we also have this really interesting article from, that I saw recently from Business Insider on June 16th, 2020, that our galaxy could have at least 36 intelligent alien civilizations, researchers say, but it may take thousands of years to find them. And, uh, yeah, so that's another really interesting headline. And then, yet another really interesting headline about UFOs, outer space, Capricorn related themes. Um, scientists have discovered a new exoplanet around twice the size of the Earth and it orbits a star at a distance that could allow life to thrive, according to the team. This was written on the 8th of June, 2020. Um, we see here, scientists have discovered a new star and planet that they believe are a mirror image of the Earth and our Sun. So. Again, there's this, this is big stuff, you know. There's a lot of uh, really big, a lot of really big Capricorn-related um, stories coming out in the news. And again, I I wanted to end it on something positive because all those shootings are really awful. But another way of seeing all these um, eclipse changes is seeing that maybe you know the the future cycles our culture and our society are going to need to be in a position where they're more supportive of extraterrestrial life and UFOs and so it's like a changing of the guard like I said like in the previous videos you know a lot of these old ideas are going away and a lot of new ideas are coming in so I hope you guys can at least be positive we're, um, we're, we're exploring outer space we're gonna find you know intelligent life probably pretty soon we're gonna, you know, we're having new forms of uh, aircraft to fly around in and all this stuff. Uh, free energy uh, devices were released and patented earlier this year. I've talked about that already. Um, so it's a very, very interesting time. And I also think it's really funny because if we do find other planets, from the standpoint of an astrologer, the people who go to those planets will have to have that shown in their chart. So they'll probably have a lot of Capricorn stuff in their chart. But it'll be really fascinating when human beings are born on another planet because once a human being is born on Mars or is born on Venus or even on a space station, 
what's that kid's chart going to be like? That's going to be really fascinating because we're going to have to relearn astrology all over again because all of a sudden Mars is not a planet, but the Earth is a planet in that child's consciousness. And um, anyways, I hope you guys, that gives you a fun idea, a fun thing to speculate about. Um, you know, if, if we do go to other planets, I'll have to relearn my whole job again because I won't be able to read the charts because I won't be reading it from Earth anymore. So that's quite interesting. All right, you guys, have fun. Take care. I've got a lot more videos um, I want to make, but I just only have so much time. If you want to donate, PayPal link below. I really appreciate it. All right, take care. Thanks, y'all. Bye.